welcome adventurers. Here's what happened last time on the Incorrigible Party. Combat continues. As the party secures the top deck of the shell-like ship, Mia searches for signs of any magic, finding an arcane aura from the cannons, but nothing else. With the ship still in motion, Shaft finds it prudent to stay quiet, creeping down a flight of stairs that lead below deck. Undetected, he finds two cultists manning a large wheel and a set of four levers. Getting the jump on them, the halfling lands an arrow and retreats to the top deck, goading an attack where the party has the high ground. Heedless of this, and glad to be out of the water and back in the fray, Shikara charges down the stairs, easily cutting down the cultists. But more arrive from the rear of the ship in response to the commotion, and more still from a second stairway ascending from the bowels of the boat. And now, on with the show. Shikara, as you get to the bottom of these stairs, you see now into, again, still light down here, you see that this the, the, hold, the hold of this boat is kind of... Uh, separated into three distinct sections just by kind of two partial walls uh the the first of which you kind of look around you you see uh behind you at the the bow there's a set of like rows of of cots and in this middle of it there's this large wooden uh like it's like an oversized barrel it looks like can't quite see what's in it it is quite tall from uh, just where you are Who's next? Shaft, you're next. Okay. Do I get any kind of sense of the direction the ship is going at this point? The In the six seconds, you've kind of turned it now based on where you your approximation from a top deck. You were kind of turning it. You see as through this the, this window, all these de- the debris that the ship is turning through and bumping against. and uh, Now you can turn towards you kind of see just open water though all right i think what i'll do is i'll we we at least moved a little bit back towards i'm gonna i can't see down the stairs can i not quite no you can see me hugging a guy (laughs) yeah yeah i think what i'm gonna do there are dead bodies around me right yeah this whole ship is littered with the dead I think what I'll do is I'll I'll go over and I, now the the wheel does it come close to the floor like yeah like a big oversized wheel like the yeah, the, yeah. the handles of the myriad of handles around the circumference of it of which maybe three or four inches away from the bottom of this deck yeah so I think I'm just gonna slide a body underneath of the guy there and sort of turn the wheel so it sort of crunches into his his uh, chest. To lock the wheel. Okay, so you want to lock it in the turning position. Yeah, I want to. It's going to be a very slight turn, like so. So the boat's not going directly away. At least we're sort of turning slowly back towards. And worst case scenario, we're making a making big circles. Circle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're using the dead cultist as a doorstop. Yes, as a as a yeah as a rudder. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. That beats mage hand rudder. That's for sure. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> And then I uh, I see what's happening here. And you did hear Grimby call out, asking for help. Yeah. I'm going to yell to Mia. I'm going to say, uh, you got that guy? Are you going to kill him or, or what? I I don't know yet. Should I? Uh, do you that's know up how to, to you. Well, do I you know run. how to steer that thing? No. <laughs> Two, three, four, five. I'm going to get to... Uh, the top of the stairs, right where Grimby's standing, and uh, I'm gonna look down the stairs and take another pot shot with uh, the bow. Fifteen to hit. Yep. Uh, eight points of damage. That is enough to put another one down. And another one bites the deck. Oh. <laughs> Mia, you're up. Question: If I inflict wounds on this guy, can I choose to do it to just knock him unconscious? Not with a spell, no. You could hit him. You could attack him normally with a weapon and want to just knock him out and not deal a death blow. All right, I'm gonna try to just knock him in the head with my hammer, like like a little whack-a-mole. <laughs> Bump. But, but not deal a a cultimole, not deal a death blow. See if I can 
you know, join everyone to help once I put this guy down. Ooh, yeah. So that would be 24. And then my damage. Nine damage. Yeah, you render him unconscious with the heavy end of your hammer just clunk right on the top of his head and he goes limp in your arms, still breathing. It's like super cartoony. I just like lay him down. I'm like, <laughs> don't move. And then I will take my movement to uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. I'll make it next to Shikara on the stairs there. The two remaining cultists in view will descend on both Shikara and Mia, taking a swipe at either one of them. Shikara with a 24. Hits. Mia only with an 11. Misses. Can... I guess I can't use my reaction to impose disadvantage when somebody's attacking me. Uh, I believe it says another creature, it right? Does. Yeah. Um, well, it is only seven slashing, which is certainly reduced. Reduced by three, so it's only four. That's all I got. Falls are in. I'm going to um, go down to the bottom level with the rest of the people down there, I guess. Um, or at least I'll, I'll go down the stairs uh, until I can see something of what's going on and then based on what I see, you know, cautiously you venture see forward. Shakara and I on the stairs and the two of them in front of us. I will stop uh, behind them and magic missile, I think, would be a good option here. Is that the one that always hits? Sure does. So you want me, to, uh, I'll just roll one at a time and then you, if one of them dies, then I can direct the next magic missile at a different one. Definitely. So five, max damage on the first. Still up. Uh, two. Still up, barely. Your two darts pierce into him. And three. And the third one blasts his body limp to the to the hold floor. Grimby, glad for the assist, charged down past everybody. Try to take out the last last guy here. Oh boy, max damage sixteen with a slash of his axe, finishing off the last cultist oh yeah we can drop out of initiative for the second time do we see any you know any potentially another level below us or is this all that we can tell from where you are it doesn't look like any additional stairs anywhere i would like to see what this barrel thing in the middle is leland would my detect magic still be going that wasn't 10 minutes right no it wasn't you're certainly still going so I'll say something like, hey, Shikara, where are you going? I can detect magic. I'll walk around with you. Okay. Let's see what this is. Ooh, yeah, what is that? As you, is that, who else is accompanying them? Anybody? I think I'll, I'll come along. Shaft? I, I will go back over to the, the helm and sort of pull the body over and try to take control again. Okay. So the, the everybody but Shaft at this barrel, you see what Falzerin and Shakara recognize as Danzig, as the halfling brother of Shaft. You see his naked body almost completely submerged in this small wooden pool. A translucent film kind of clings to him, fully encasing him. Uh, in what's almost like a like a cocoon but the the water in which he rests is like this dirty briny green kind of gives off this putrid stench of of rotting fish Uh, his eyes are closed and he is unmoving and kind of sprinkled in the water as well there's these long thin and pointed flower petals flower petals and does mia detect any magic around that yeah, is it glowing? Yes, Mia, you do detect that whatever is happening to Danzig is magical in nature. Volzerin, isn't this Shaft's brother? It it sure looks like him. I've got no idea what's going on here, though. Never seen anything like this. He is sleeping and smells. Well, yeah, I, I don't Shaft know. Shaft if... has a brother that looks like that. I think this is um, what's left of what used to be Shaft's brother. He has been transformed. Is this what he's doing? Transforming right now? I've got no idea. I do not know either. 
Hey, well, uh, what did we do? We shared this with the shaft, eh? Uh, I think we have to let him know. Mighty, mighty strange. Yeah. Um, what else do we see around here? Can we make another uh, cursory scan of what's down here before we go back up? Uh, right at the, the, the stern of the ship of this hold in the third, what would be the third compartment. you got to speak English, Leland. What, what part of the ship? Kind of wandering closer to <laughs> The stern. <laughs> like, the front, look the at back, that the freaking left, picture. The right. I don't know what a stern is. He's already mentioned the cots. That's what he's trying to mention again. The ass end. The yeah, a- the ass end. Thank likely. you, John. Now you're speaking my language. At the ass end of the ship. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, in the, in, the, in the third kind of partitioned area at the bottom of the ship, there's four massive glowing yellow mounds that they, they seem to grow out of the hull itself. Uh, each of them has this horizontal split that opens and closes to reveal like a top and bottom row of, of what look like square flat teeth. And to, to one corner of this third compartment, there's a huge pile of some type of, of crystal, some crystalline structures. Treasure. I'm going to walk in that room. I'll follow Shakara, just detecting magic as we go. Yeah, and again, Mia, you, from the crystal pile itself, lights up under the influence of your magic. Mia, mm. is that magic? These crystals must be magic, or else they wouldn't be glowing. What are these creatures? Can I do any other, like, arcana or something on these crystals, or... I guess I could call Falzern over. Falzern, do you know anything about these crystals? I would take a close look, see if they match up with anything I've seen before or read about. Go ahead and roll an arcana check. Oh, critical fail. I suck today, so... Mia is really feeling the drain from that tentacle. Uh, 18 for Falzern. So, Valdrin, you don't recognize or can you can't name what this, what these things are. You can certainly tell that they hold some type of power, uh, as if they could be like they could potentially be like the power source for for whatever propels this ship, much like putting coal maybe into like a furnace kind of thing, right? Okay. But other than that, uh, you have never really seen anything quite like these before. As the the inside of them, it, it, you pick them up and they they're 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 heavier than what you would expect them to be. And inside of them, it looks like they're uh, like the the middle of them is filled with like some type of fluid, as if you kind of turn it in your hand. Uh, it's like like if you had a, a uh, like a snow globe. There's like a, a little bubble in which you know you can clearly see some fluid moving around inside of it. Yeah. And the fluid is like this this deep, uh, dark, bluish black. And these these things that are in the side of the boat, do, do I recognize them? No. I want to get up right next to one and like really look L- at it. Lick it. <laughs> Not lick it. <laughs> but I will I'll sniff it. Is there somewhere I could touch it without it like thinking that it's going to like hurt me in any way? Yeah, you could reach it. Think of it as like this, uh, it's like this big featureless head but really just what looks like a mouth do you think those crystals feed these things i would assume so falls are in are you able to identify these crystals i they don't i don't recognize them um they, it okay. seems like they they have some sort of power they emanate a bit of i don't know how to describe it if you had more time to study them, might you be able to identify them? It's a great question. I'm going to chuck one inside one of them. <laughs> oh, what? You are not Gozer anymore. <laughs> Relax. I'm still curious. Roll a dexterity saving throw to I'm see gonna, how many fingers you lose. You're going to pick one up and chuck one inside one of the creatures. Sure. And it, like, almost greedily starts to chomp down using its, the, these, the, you know, the flat, large teeth to kind of grind this crystal down and and you hear it kind of shattering and crunching in its mouth and it seems to swallow this bit of crystal that you give it and in the on the wall itself kind of running up to the to this what would be the ceiling of this hold right and you can make out in the in the shell substance of which the ship is created from there what look like to be tubules like 
they're they're not like you know it's not like a pipe that would run along a roof right but it's literally like the a semicircle of a of a bulge that you can see clearly now is running the length of of the ship and it runs to the front of the ship so there so there's one come almost coming out of each of these four things so four of these semicircular tubes running the length of the ship the the one in which you feed this crystal to you see the the same color of the liquid inside of it kind of courses through this tube does the liquid look like the black ooze from the lake no it it looks it looks distinctly different it is more blue than black but it's like almost uh, such a deep blue that it appears black unless you kind of hold it up to a direct source of light you can see that it is more of a blue okay than than the slime so it does look like it's different than what was tainting the lake oh that was very interesting yeah I, i've never seen anything like it mia's gonna go up and talk to shaft because she's she's like okay shikara i'd like to do the same but before we do that i want to take a look at you know whatever else is down here what else do we see uh, so other than than the the ten cots, there's just a few boxes and crates. They look like they're full of uh, like food supplies. As there were actually living people on this boat that they did need uh, food and and water for. But that seems to be about the gist of what's down here. Don't see anything of value or any potential intel or anything like that. Not in the hold here. No. no. There was okay. stuff on the second level. Okay. Shaft, what are you doing up here? You just kind of... So I, I sort of steer the ship a little bit more that way, then push the guy back in there, lock it down again, and uh, sort of run back towards the steps and yell as I'm running by the steps going, Everybody okay down there? Shaft, you're going to want to see this. I'm like at the bottom of the stairs because I was making my way to him anyway. Yes, Shaft, please come down. Shafty, have you got... Uh, which direction is this ship going? Have you got that under control? Not yet! And I run up the steps. And I sort of want to get my bearings as where we are. And sort of get an idea, stand there for a second, and see how much the ship is turning. Okay. You know, and then sort of go... Sort of calculate out where I need to go to be able to turn the wheel back and, and lock it in on the body. So we're heading straight towards uh, her accident. Okay, why don't you make me a survival check? Uh, 11. Okay. So you go ahead and you try to gauge kind of the the correct angle at which to turn this boat and hopefully lock it into a spot that'll take you to the direction of Heraklion. Are are we moving pretty fast or is this a very slow It's still very slow. Okay, good. I just don't want to go down there and forget and ram into the island. (laughs) No. (laughs) We've got some time. So I'll run back down the steps, you know, Adjust, stick the guy down underneath there, lock him in, and then uh, go down the steps uh, slowly. And we uh, we look at him and we say, Shaft, you should prepare yourself. I've been told you know this man. Look, Who? Look, look in the barrel, Shaft. Shaft. It's, it looks like it's Danzig. Do you need me to boost you up? No, I, I think I can see in. Okay. So is it open on the top? It is, yeah. What do I see? You see that his Danzig's features they've they've grown even more fish like even just in the short couple of days since the the final awakening ritual, and which took place in the caves, and it, all his hair has fallen out, replaced by these three budding formations of of fins, running from like from his forehead to the back of his neck, you know, kind of in like a mohawk kind of fashion. Large patches of scales have formed over various sections of his body. And you recognize the, the these petals as being similar to what was kind of dripping off of the octopus that they had removed from its own little barrel and applied to the sacrifice's face during that ritual. Mm. So it seems to be the same flower. Six points. What color? What color is the flower? These petals, they're kind of a, a red, uh, purplish color. Okay. As you don't see any intact, it is lit, it is just like plucked petals, kind of sprinkled in the water. So this smelly water is it? Um, I mean, is it like I can see through it? It's clear enough to be able to see into it. Yeah. I'm going to uh, 
pull out my rapier. Shaft. And I'll sort of, I'll sort of put it over. What? What? Hold on a second. And I sort of reach down into the water, about where his chest is, you know, his chest, and I sort of give him a little nudge, not a, not jabbing it into him, but just like to see if he's gonna wake up. Hey, I just you kind of push the tip into his chest against the 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 film right kind of it kind of bunches around the the point and he kind of bobs a little bit as he's floating in the water but he doesn't stir from from your your poke what do you want us to do is he alive chef Uh, i don't know i mean i really don't think he's my brother anymore no he is not but he may give us, uh, he may still be of use. How? Obviously, he knows a lot about what's going on. Maybe a way to, uh, get rid of this Kray Lakina thing. It was summoned. Maybe we can send it back from where it came. I think you've got a good point, Shaft, but who knows how powerful he's become. Why don't we try and get control of this ship and look around, see what else we can find out before we try and wake him up? He could be a handful. Do you believe you could control him? Oh, I don't know. I mean, that's exactly the the point here. If it came to it, would you be able to either kill him or stand by while we did? Yeah. He's, he's, like I said, he's uh, no longer my brother. And uh, is there a lid to this thing? It doesn't look like it, no. Can we fashion a lid for this thing? Yeah, you could... Maybe crack open some of these crates and be able to form some type of cover for it. Yeah, I'd say let's let's lock him in here until we uh, get to Heraklion and figure out what our next move is. Do you know how to steer the ship, Shaft? Because I, uh, I kept a cultist alive up there. I should probably go check on him, but he might he might help us. I don't know. Yeah, I I, I got the thing going in the right direction. I but I ha- I don't know what the levers do. Well, we're going pretty slow, right? Yeah, not as fast as I'd like. Shakara fed one of these things crystals. I don't know. Maybe it's like God. A- what the hell's what the hell's that stuff back here? Yeah, those are weird. We things. don't know, but they like the crystals. They eat the crystals. Well, the crystals are magic. We know that much. So I'll I'll walk back and take a look at what they saw previously, and. uh... Do I get the sense that these things are moving? You know, like, are they... Propulsion? Propulsion, yeah. I'm trying to figure out how I yeah. can how I can say this without, uh, like... Are they farting out crystal power? Do we hear stuff outside the hull of the ship that makes it sound like there's something pushing the ship forward? Why don't you make me a perception check here? Why don't you put in your earplugs, someone? Uh, that's a 15. Yeah, as you kind of get right to the, the wall of the, the hull and kind of press your ear to it, you do hear the sloshing of water and something that kind of intermittently hits against the hull itself, kind of very lightly, but as if maybe there's something out there moving. Okay, I'll go, wait, I think I might know what these things are. And I run... Uh, I go start to go up the steps. Let let's try and figure out how to control this ship before we mess around with these things anymore. Well, yeah, I think these things might be pushing the ship. I'm going to go up top and look down and see if if that's the case. I'm right behind you, Shaft. I'll get that cultist. So, like, I'll follow Shaft up there and then drag the unconscious guy up to the bow of the ship with Shaft. I'm going to walk over to Grimby Chomp and say, Captain Chomp. Shall we christen this boat the Rising Three? Wow. Oh, wait. What do you, you mean by christen? What do you mean by christen? <laughs> With champagne? Like a bottle of champagne when you uh, name a boat? I was My not, God, you guys. No. Get your minds out of the gutters. Wow. I was not thinking. You are like, shall we christen this boat? <laughs> We're not. No. <laughs> We're going to be on the <laughs> Fathom so High Leland, you have to role play Grimby. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> you guys would shut up and let Grimby respond. <laughs> I will uh, that be a proposition to have me captain this here vessel that you have boarded and acquired I uh, I tell you I certainly cannot lay claim to it as I you 
You all pulled most of the work here, I tell ya. I have no use for a ship. As far as I am concerned, it is yours. Well, I be happy to take her, I tell ya. She she be a strange, but look like a fine vessel. And I'll go up the stairs. And Grimby will accompany you. Actually, you know what? Grimby's probably going to maybe check out these strange seeming engine things. You come up the stairs, Shakara, and you see... I almost said Bryn. You see Mia, and she's like smacking this cultist awake. Just Are like, you <laughs> tied them up, or what are you doing with them? There's plenty of rope. You could find like, coils of rope around the ship. Yeah, I tie, I tie his like... I have him sitting kind of like with his hands at his ankles and like tie a rope around so that all four limbs are just tied together. Okay. So he's like sitting. I'm smacking his face. So you're trying to wake him up? Yep. Okay. And Shaft, what are you what are the rest of you doing? So I wanted to go up to the to the ass end of the ship and uh, look down and see if we if I can see that something's moving us forward, sort of get an idea of if my theory is correct. Well up on the on the on the top deck you remember it had the, the opening and the hinge was basically back there. So you actually can't oh, yeah. get right to the rear of it. Um, and kind of peering around the side, though, uh, without getting into the water and further below the surface, you don't see anything immediately from the top deck here. Okay. So I think what I would do is, is go back down the steps and see if Grimby's there and say, hey, come and help me figure this thing out and go up to the controls. Okay, he'll certainly accompany you. I'd like to look at the tables and see what's there. Okay. Falzern, what are you doing? I'm going to be on the second level um, looking around to see if there's any information, uh, any papers lying around I can look at that might give me an idea of what's going on with this ship and the crew. You and Shakar are kind of doing the, doing the same thing here. So, Shakar and Falzern, the, the papers on either of these tables, they look they are very similar. It's just a bunch of various sketches of like world maps of Aspara and in particular they focus on uh, more of the sea regions and you find one of them that has uh, roughly a dozen circles, sort of penned circles around Aspara itself, all out in like at sea basically and you see that eight of these circles have large X's crossed through them Whereabouts in relation to the mainland of Aspara? Again, in various spots uh, out to sea. East of? No, like all, like it, or like around. Oh, all Aspara. around Aspara. Okay, yes, gotcha. Yeah. There's a dozen locations on this particular map you have that are circled, and but there, there's no uh, depicted on the maps. At least there are no land masses in which are around the circles. It does look like. These are like locations in the middle of the ocean, it seems. Are there any from up in my area? Yeah, there literally there's some uh, near around. Basically, the only spot there isn't any are at the tip of the southern tip of the Phalaren Forest. There seems to be uh, three or four kind of to the east of the Isle of Heraklion, another two uh, very north of Aspara itself, and the rest of them are kind of peppered uh, west and more southeastern around Aspara. So the two that would be up from the area where I'm from, would I know of anything that would be in that area? Like landmass? Well, anything. Like if there's a known Triton population in that area or... <laughs> no, you wouldn't know that. Different kind of uh, seaweed growing there? No. In fact, they... I mean, you, Shikara, just kind of looking at being familiar with nautical maps yourself, you know that they are so far out to see that the depths at which anything, like if there were a particular herb or flower, say, that they wanted to dive for, they would have to dive very deep to acquire any such plant or, or material. These marks make no sense. Do you understand them? Are any of them off the coast of Heraklion where I've come into contact with the Tritons in the past? Like I said, there's three or four to the east of the isle, like past the isle. So there's no, there's no circles between the isle and the mainland, okay. nothing like that. Again, these are all far out to sea. The, I, I can't make any sense of them either, Shakara. I don't know. I guess we move on. I mean, we can let's roll these up and, and keep them yes. in case there's any significance to we them. We definitely should take them with us. 
Um, any other boxes or um, desks or anything around? So at the very ass end of the ship, it looks like there's kind of there's a table full of actual like food where may, maybe some of the cultists were in the middle of having a meal when you guys came down here and interrupted it. But other than that, it is more just boxes of general supplies. You do actually find a, a chest in amidst a bunch of barrels and crates. It does look more ornate than the various cargo. I was hoping you'd say it looks ornate. Uh, okay, is it? does it look locked? Can we open it? You can definitely open Wait, it. It doesn't you. look like there's any lock on it. I want to check it for traps. Ah. Okay, make an investigation check. 13. You don't uh, detect anything uh, that would uh, impair opening the lid, or it doesn't look like there's any, like, trip wires attached to it anywhere. Stand back, just in case. And I'll open it. And you open it to reveal a, a chest full of gold pieces. Woo! <laughs> All right. <laughs> ah, I found some gold. How much is... You've got my Did attention. you say you found gold? How much is in there? Uh, more than you could count just by glancing at it. They all have Chuck E. Cheese on it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. If you pick one up and you bite into it, uh, it's chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I am hungry. Okay, let's uh, let's let's gather this up and we can we can divide it amongst everyone later. Shaft and Grimby, you guys are looking at this steering mechanism. Yeah, you say there's four four levers. Yeah, levers. Okay, I'm gonna go to the one furthest to the left, and. Uh, I'm going to say to Grimby, well, you know, best way to find out how something works is to do it and grab it and pull it down. Do you want to ask this guy? Is this is this in the middle and you can go so up there, and down? Yes, or is it, exactly a- like the apparatus of Qualish, the crab subs. They all are, when you activate them, they revert back to a neutral position. So all four are in a neutral position. So yes, you can put any of them up or down to activate them. Okay, farthest to the left, pull them down. And you hear kind of a creak and a groan uh, coming from above you. And after a few seconds, the soft clunk of the top shell-like portion closing. As any sunlight coming down from the stairs from the top deck is now snuffed out. So now it's just the kind of the hanging lanterns below deck here that illuminating the ship. So where is Mia right now? Is she up I'm top right or next or to you with the cultist. Are you? So, like, I see you just walk up there with Grimby, pull a lever. Something's clunking. So I take my hammer out. I put it, at the like, under the guy's chin, like, propping it up. And I'm like, tell him how it works before he kills us all. I'll, I'll glance back and go, that puts the thing down. I bet if you push it up, it puts it up. But it's, like, right? scary to hear a big noise and see the sun snuffed out. Like, come on. I look at him and go, right? I don't have to tell you anything. Then he looks around at all the bodies of his fallen comrades. I don't think no matter what I tell you, I'm getting out of here alive. I look at Mia. I sort of, you know, give her a a look and go, uh, okay, go ahead and kill him. So I, I like have the hammer under his chin and I say, is that your final answer? To die in service of Kralakina is to die in service of God. Uh, Bryn just... Who? Smacks him in the head. Oh, frick. <laughs> I keep doing that. I keep doing that to them. Well, murder, defenseless, murdering a defenseless person, Bryn, they go hand in hand. Yeah, but Mia doesn't. <laughs> no, so Mia, after that, like, sassafras response, and, like, after <laughs> praising some god that she doesn't believe in, just knocks him unconscious again with her hammer. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the next one from the left and uh, push it up. At the base of the, the this kind of console that these levers are set in, you see more of those kind of semicircular tubes and one of them lights up in that same blue that the rest of the party saw and the ship kind of surges forward. Um, I'll pull it back and all the way to the down position and let it go back to uh, to the normal spot. And pulling it all the way down the ship's momentum decreases, acceleration decelerates, and it comes to a stop. Ah, this one's the engine. I think it just uh, pushes it forward quickly, or uh, we go slow. I bet you these other ones make it go up and down. They, they dive into the water. 
Right, it was under the water, yeah. Aye, that, that makes, makes plenty of sense. Now, the thing is, did the, was the door shut coming down to this level when uh, when we got here? Or was it is it just open stairs down? It, it looked like there was just open stairs. Hmm. Well? What are you worried about, Shaft? Drowning. Yeah. But haven't you taken your potion? There's absolutely no way you would know that. <laughs> but I know. Clam, <laughs> clam top shut, though, right? It's all closed up right now. Yeah, you shut the you shut the top. It's like a clam. You shut the top. Yeah. That's I'm just saying was... if the entire boat goes under the water and water goes down the steps. It, is but it won't go down the steps because it. you shut the clam top. Or encapsulate it. Like, the... literally, the ship is like a sandwich. It's completely c- covered. Yeah. The ship, well, he, one of saying? you could go up there and look to see what happened. <laughs> he said he, you snuffed out the light of the sun. Like it's. I did say that. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get it. Okay. Uh, go to the the next one from the left, the third one over. I Do, do I feel... I probably would have felt the ship lurch forward to accelerate and then decelerate, right? Yeah, you've all felt the sudden acceleration for sure. If there's nothing else in this room that I think is uh, worth looking at... I'll go up to see what's going on. How long did it take you to get all that gold in your bag of holding? Just sort of a question to Leland, as much as it is a statement. Well, it depends. Are you and Shakira sitting there to count what's no, in no. this chest? No, no. We're not counting. We're, we're dumping. Just, <laughs> we're going to take everything out, and we'll divide it up later. So you literally are dumping this chest in your bag of holding? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what else would we do? Put the chest in. <laughs> yeah, put the whole chest in. Is there in. anything else in the chest other than the gold? It does look like just the gold. I, I think it's far funnier that you dumped it all in. So yeah. Uh, so then uh, pull down on that same lever. And you all feel, again, another kind of lurch. as the And you can see out the, the viewfinder that the whole 100-foot ship submerges 30 feet. Take it back to uh, up to center so it centers again. So it doesn't sink any further down. So we know the clamshell. Actually, I'm going to pull it so we go back and, and raise up. Back to the surface, okay. Back to the surface. And then I'll do the last one. Uh, start up position. You hear a, a, an alarm blare and a voice say, self-destruct in five. Are you kidding me? Put it- <laughs> <laughs> Freaking kidding me. Actually, I would in- So Sorry, which direction did you pull it? Uh, up. <laughs> so, turning up in front of you, uh, it turns on like headlights. And you can see now bright light out to 60 feet in front of you and another dim uh, for a further 60. 120 so feet. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it down, reset it to make sure the lights go back out. That is what happens. I think you got it figured out, Shaft. Shaft, it, making the ship go all over the place? Yeah, I think we got it. You figured it out. You got that? You got it, Grimby? I she looked to be fairly simple. But uh, boat to size, she she require a crew that we just slaughtered. I've got I've got one for you here, buddy. You don't want this crew anyway. I don't think uh, he'd be cooperative. I tell you, I smell a mutiny of boat brewing in this one already. Yes, perhaps at Heracleon, <laughs> you could hire a new crew. I'm I'm a little worried about that barrel shaft. Like I, whether he's alive or not, it's. You know? What are you going to do? Who, Danzig? Yeah, Dan- the one you call Danzig, yes. I I don't know yet. I, I I don't know how to handle it yet. I mean, we could... I I really want to be able to talk to him if we can bring him back. How, uh... How soon could we be at Heracleon with a boat like this? Underwater and everything. I look at Grimby and go, What do you think? Hey, well, we can throttle, uh, throttle her all the way up and see how fast she go. <laughs> I tell you, this be a, this be a good day for me right now. Uh, it sure turned out pretty poorly uh, at the beginning, but uh, she she be shaping up. I tell you, I say we throw some of them crystal things in them big orbs and we crank her all the way up and see what she got. At that, your car is gonna run down the stairs to throw the crystals in. Yeah, Shakara runs down as she does. I'm like Shakara. I was mostly asking because I don't know about you guys, but I'm in rough shape. I I feel really weak. Like, I feel weakened from that freaking th- tentacle thing. And I just, I don't know if we should wait and heal or I don't know how long it'll take, but I'm not ready to fight again. I 
I know I want to get on dry land as soon as possible. I throw a crystal in them. The one on the left, the one that hasn't gotten one yet. And again, more up these kind of the, the semicircular uh, shell-like tubule blue color f- flashes through it. And you actually notice too near the, the pile of uh, of the crystal, there's like a, a communi- some type of communication system. There's like this, you know, like, a, like the uh, funnel of a gramophone. It's kind of a, a smaller version, you know, like that. And you can hear a slight echo. You hear kind of Grimby laughing, fr- the c- echoing kind of down this okay. little I'll pipe. I'll run over to it and I'll say, Can you all hear me? Can you hear me now? Can we? Yeah, the, all those at the helm can certainly hear Shikara's voice. Hello. And Mia's like, <laughs> Yeah, I can. Hi, Shikara. This is cool. This is so fun. I'm going to chuck another crystal in, one that hasn't gotten one yet. I, I hear you there, Shikara. Are we, are we ready to open her up there? One more. And I toss the last crystal in. And then I'll run back. I'm going to run past Danzig and look in. Lift it up and look in. Still, it doesn't look like he's, he's moved or, or any change since, since you closed him in there. Uh, lever number three, pull down to submerge. And then uh, push lever number two up to uh, engage the engines. Hey, uh, who, who be the captain here, I tell you, Dear Chef? To... Well, what do you think? I, I, I just tested it out. I think we got it. And the the whole boat surges forward with the the fuel that Shakara has pumped in it, and you just start blasting through through the water, very similar to to the pace in which you witness from the deck of the rising too, and how quickly it moved and how maneuverable it just was. And Grimby kind of takes a hold of the wheel, kicks the body out of the way. Mia would like to sit down and start her long rest right now. Oh, it won't take or, you eight I mean, hours. Not long, I'm sorry, not long rest, short rest. I misspoke. Yeah, if we have an hour, Falls will short rest. You can absolutely take a short rest if, uh, for the trip to Herakinam. Well, how does it work? Like, I know remove wounds, or sorry, remove disease, if that's what I, I was given. Was it a disease or a curse? You have no idea. So how will I ever find out? When the symptoms, if the symptoms present themselves. Or if you try a spell and it works. Like, yeah, so, like, if I don't have it prepared, how does that work? I have to wait till the next... After a long rest, you re-prepare your cleric spell list. So I could re- I could prepare, remove curse, and remove disease, and then see which one works type thing. Yeah, after your next long rest. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to roll hit die, though. All right, while people are resting, I'm going to go back to where Danzig's at. Open the lid up, and you say there's these flower petals floating on the top of the surface, right? Yeah, that's right. I'm going to take in my dagger, or sort of lift them out and drop them into a bag so there's none, there's no flowers left inside. Okay. So how many do I have? How many petals? You have uh, about 40 petals. Wow. Mia, do you need assistance? Yeah, I'm kind of hurting. I'll come over to you and I'll lay my hands on you. Take a big breath, close my eyes, and I will give you ten hit points. Ooh, I don't need that many. Oh, how many do you need? Like five. Okay, I'll give you five hit points then. Thank you. I was just going to ask, uh, did anything change when I took the, the petals out? It didn't look like anything immediately changed. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually put my hand in the water. And it has the consistency of, like, normal normal water just just seems to have that stench doesn't burn your skin or anything like that does he have any items on him like the sacrificial dagger no he's completely naked oh okay i think i'll put the lid back on look around find a piece of rope or something wrap it around the whole thing and tie it while i'm up there with shikara and she lays hands on me i want to ask her and say shikara do you know how to heal disease i think I, or like a curse? I don't know. That that master did something to me. Uh, let me try something. I can expend five hit points on my lay on hand, a uh, pool of healing, and I can cure the target of one disease or neutralize one poison affecting it. I figured you had more spell slots after that last fight than I did. And Mia 
as Shakara applies this this healing power to you, you like yeah. kind of feel something deep inside of you, like that you kind of barely knew was there, uh, seems to to heal itself. Shakara, thank you. I feel so much better. That is wonderful news. Oh man, wow, what a relief. I am glad I could help, could assist you. Don't tell anybody, but I was kind of scared. To be clear, to be clear, that didn't fix your max HP reduction. Ah, oh, for reals? So what the heck did it do? That cured the blue rot that the drowned oh, blade gave you you're that had yet to present me? its symptoms of. Are you kidding me? You what? would need probably a greater restoration, which I don't believe any of us are high enough level to do. Why? What's what's it? To probably? get your hit point max back up to max. Yeah, that's a higher level cleric thing, right? I yeah. was you gave me the blue rot, you freaking snake. <laughs> you failed. <laughs> why don't um you know what, Sh- Shakara, why don't you do or uh, or you know what, Mia, you can do it on yourself as well. Why don't you both just do a medicine check? Okay. Eighteen. Twenty one. Y- you both kind of conferring with each other and, you know, uh, conversing over some maybe some shared experience dealing with this type of thing, you both kind of come to the clu- conclusion that what is currently afflicting you, Mia, very possibly and most likely will be uh, healed after a, a, a good night's rest. That is not quite as severe as it possibly could be. I think it could have been so much worse, Shikara. Thank you. Let us see how you feel in the morning. Yeah, I, I just hope that we don't have too much action once we get to Heraklion. I'm just exhausted. I'll talk to Falzrin for a second. I go, hey, uh, where, where in Heraklion, Heraklion are we headed? Is is there is it Port Heraklion? Yeah, it's it, it's around that area, Shaft. If we just head that way, I'll be able to kind of figure out where I need to go once we get closer. Hey, Grimby, Port Heraklion, step on it. Hey, you see him kind of give the wheel a slight turn as he adjusts the course. During this short rest, I think uh, Falzern's going to be studying this map, um, trying to, you know, piece together anything he might be able to gather from what these circles could mean. Um, he's feeling perplexed and and also concerned that it, you know he's thinking maybe this is maybe they're searching for the Tritons and we're going to try and wage war against them. Okay, why don't you do uh, make an investigation check then? Uh, 17. So have, taking more of a detailed look at this map, you kind of notice that it it's, it's not just a single piece of parchment. It's more like it's uh, like patches of parchment have been attached as if, you know, maybe sections of a map have been kind of cut out and then reinserted into the the main part of of this folding piece of or uh, rolled up scroll of of, of parchment and some of the patches they look much like like newer like the the paper itself right the the, they're not quite as discolored as the the main part of the map as if uh as if they've been worked on quite recently but if you kind of look at uh to the west the the few circles over there there's two or three of the circles in this kind of northwesterly region. These sections, these squares of, of parchment are as discolored as the main portion of it, which depicts the, the actual land mass of Aspara. So it seems like some of these circles have been created much, much more recent than some of these other ones that have the X's through them. Okay, so someone had a map of, that w- that was primarily focused on the landmass, I think, of Aspara, but they've gradually been adding pieces uh, of the sea as they've been exploring, perhaps, I guess, is what Falzern thinks of that. That is a good assessment to, to come to. And um, you said the, the eastern part looks newer, so Her- Heraklion's area? That's right, yes. And you see kind of north of Heraklion, again, fairly far out to sea, just judging by the, the you know, scratch of a scale on this 
uh, handmade map that the the four circles that have yet to be X'd out are in this northeastern region, kind of above and past the Isle of Heraklion, but they would be closest to Heraklion than the mainland. Okay. And they're on a newer piece of map? That's correct, yes. Okay, so I'm going to go walk up to Mia while everything's calmed down a little bit. And I'm going to say, uh, hey, don't uh, take this the wrong way, but what the hell are you? She, like, blushes. <laughs> and she reaches into her pocket and she's she pulls out the amulet. And she looks up and she's like, well... I'm an Asimar. I was I was raised by humans. Like my family, they're all human and and I'm like take it and I fasten it around my neck and and uh my appearance goes back to normal like when they met me. I don't know. My parents, they just thought I would have a target on my back and I was made fun of a lot. Like they didn't want me to be made fun of or I don't know. They were scared and trying to protect me, so this amulet makes me appear human, but I am an Asimar. So would Asimars be something that the common folk would know or have heard of or seen? I would say that um, definitely you may have some knowledge of their existence, but especially in Aspar, they are incredibly rare. Like, I, I don't think any of you would have been in the presence of an Asimar before. So your eyes are no longer glowing? Yeah, no, they're just brown now. Oh, I liked your eyes before. They were very pretty. Well, thanks, Shakara, but I just... I don't know, I'm not very comfortable in my own skin. I, My parents always made me wear this amulet, and even though I've been away from home for the past year, I just... I don't really take it off very often. I do not want you to feel like you cannot be yourself around us. I agree with Shakara, Mia. I, I, I've never... I've only read of Asimar, and I am... I am amazed to have finally met someone like yourself in person. It, it's fantastic. Well, I appreciate what you guys are saying, but I just, I don't want to draw, t- like you guys aren't the type that are going to want attention drawn to you everywhere we go, right? So for now, I'll, I'll be human, Mia, but when you need me, I can take the necklace off. Mayhaps when we are around strangers, you wear the necklace. But when we are alone, Maybe you can trust us and be yourself. You guys sure do seem to run into a lot of trouble. Oh my gosh, and I mean, this guy's got a brother in a barrel. It's just too much going on right now. I think I'm just going to wear it. Can can you pop the wings out anytime you want to? No. I can only fly for just a short minute like that. I mean, I wonder if I'll ever be able to fly for longer. But for now, it's just about a minute and... And it's only once a day. I I have to rest before I can get that power back. Would you all say that rescuing this ship and the fact that our other travelers made it out alive, we assume, would this be a great (laughs) deed, do you think? I think it's a great deed, Shikara. That's all I need to hear. I'm going to go over to the corner and I'm going to pull out my brand and my uh, poultices and my wraps and I will use my breath weapon to heat up the brand and make my fourth mark on my arm. Alright. Mia like watches you do it. I have told you about it. But you haven't seen me do it. I I definitely would have asked you questions about your brands and stuff. Girl talk, you know, <laughs> sleepover. <laughs> Instead of doing your nails, you do your brands. <laughs> Okay, the other thing I'd probably want to do is go back and uh, pick up some of these power crystals and chuck them in my bag. Maybe a dozen of them. Would Mia know that you're doing that, or would you do it sneakily? I I just, I wouldn't be, you know, suddenly creeping. I would just walk back like I was walking around the ship, go back and look at the engine room and chuck a few in there. If somebody's with me, they can watch me do it. If nobody's with me, then I guess nobody else would know I have them. I think it makes sense that Faldron would want to grab, but uh, I don't know how big this pile of them is. Like, I obviously want to leave some for the ship to be able to be powered, but if they seem magical, he'd want to grab a few as well to keep and, and study 
and examine, see what he can figure out about them. How many would you like to grab? Is it a pretty substantial pile? Like a... There's a fair amount of them, yes. Grabbing a dozen of them would certainly wouldn't significantly deplete the supply of the ship. Okay, I'll, I'll take ten, I guess. They're about, like, softball size. So they, they're very easy to hold in your hand. And they're, they're more um, elongated. They're not, they're not like, circular, like a, like a snowball or a ball. They're more... If they're softball size, where is Shaft keeping 12 of these on his person? <laughs> I was just going to say, if they're softball size, I'm going to take about four of them and put them in my bag. Is there a name for this, uh, for this ship? The Rising Three. The Rising Three, okay. Newly dubbed. They, they christened it. <laughs> That's right. It took Grimby longer than a short rest to christen the Rising <laughs> Three That's for sure. <laughs> and that's our show. If you're not already, be sure to follow us at Incorrigible Par on Twitter, Incorrigible Party on Instagram and Facebook, and you can go to incorrigibleparty.com for world lore and PC information, and we've recently started adding some maps there as well. Incorrigible Party is generously sponsored and made possible by Critical Hit Design. For any of your design needs, visit criticalhitdesign.com. All ambient sound and music is provided by Tabletop Audio. And our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. You can reach him at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. Happy adventuring! This shell-like sub y'all are in it rocks as if something had hit it. Those sitting at the helm with Grimby Chum, you see the debris of a rowboat come sinking down in front of the, this oh, this crystal view that you finder you have in the front of this boat. From the right side of this open this this window, you see the kraken come into view as it floats and swims right up to the boat, keeping pace with its movement now, almost parallel to it. And you see it just peer into this this window. And Grimby quickly pulls one of these levers, make, the fourth lever, making sure, sure the lights are off. And doesn't slow, but continues at whatever he's doing. And the Kraken, it just, it just kind of pauses there as it wraps around now the the nose of this sub and and looking into it you see its big eye staring into this window and hey uh, nobody move I you see this eye this black eye uh, it'd be like a doll's eye and the kraken doesn't seem to react to anything uh, I'm not moving. And none of us know what to say. <laughs> no, nope. nope. not moving at all. Falzin's basically like paralyzed in place in fear. He's does not want to run into this kraken again. I mean, Mia's gonna like take a deep breath and puff her chest up to try to look like she's not scared, but she's freaking out. Shakara will say, "Go faster." And Grimby shakes his head. This, you know, like five seconds pass, ten seconds pass, and. You see its head kind of bobbing around as if it's trying to, to like peer further into this window. And then suddenly it releases and swims off kind of perpendicular to you and disappears into the sea. Well, there you go. <sighs> we just got to inform everybody if they see a kraken, stand still. I believe now we go faster. Yes, let's get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. It was almost like he was memorizing our faces and... I don't know if he could see us. I, I think... I don't think he could see anything in here and that's why he left. Hey, Fuzzin, I think you may be under something there. I could have swore he was looking right at me. Yeah, maybe his vision isn't that great. Or maybe he can't see through the... This, this hull of the boat. Maybe it, it's one way. Maybe he can only see out. I don't know. Uh, let's get back on dry land. Yeah, let's let's get to Heraklion. Agreed. Get out of here. That is a very good idea. <laughs>